Well, we're here today again with uh, Dr. Ines from um, kind of Dallas. Well, anyway, uh, some type of uh, bedroom community outside of Dallas. Tell us where that exactly is, Dr. Ines, please. Well, we have two offices. One is in Irving, Texas. The other one is in DeSoto, Texas. Um, Irving, Texas is uh, right next to where the old Dallas Cowboys stadium used to be. Um, and DeSoto, Texas uh, is just south of, of Dallas. Um, there are a lot of people that live in Irving and work in Dallas, a lot of people that live in DeSoto and work in Dallas. Sure, sure. Well, what we want to talk to you about today, what I would like to find out is, I know that you do, um, you know, drug testing, um, and there are all kinds of reasons and uh, all kinds of people slash companies who should, could, and even must avail themselves and or the employees of drug testing. So why don't you uh, first give us the different categories of drug testing which are out there and, uh, and who on an average is, uh, is using it? I'd love to. Uh, there, are major, there are three major categories of drug testing. The first category are federally controlled drug testing programs. Uh, the second category uh, are non-federally controlled uh, drug testing programs. Of the non-federally controlled drug testing programs, uh, you, uh, a, a specimen can be evaluated in a reference lab or in a doctor's office. The, the specimen that's evaluated in a doctor's office is an immunoassay screen uh, or a quick screen, and we usually have that information available to our clients within 15 minutes after the specimen is collected. Um, that information then is, uh, is faxed or emailed to our, to our client often bef uh, before the patient or the, the donor ever leaves our facility. If the uh, reference laboratory is used, then obviously that, that specimen of urine needs to be sent to the reference laboratory, and it takes 24 to 48 hours to get a result. Of the federally controlled drug screens, those always require uh, sending the specimen to a, a SAMHSA-controlled laboratory uh, that evaluates it in accordance with federal guidelines. Um, the, the, we use Quest Diagnostic Laboratories as our primary lab, but, but we also use many other labs as well. Uh, with Quest particularly, when we submit a specimen to them, uh, our, we're connected to their computers, and as soon as that specimen is finished, uh, we get a copy of it in our computer, and then we can process it uh, oftentimes uh, very, very quickly. And so most of our negative drug screens uh, get, our clients get reports in 24 hours. If the drug screen is not negative and it has to be evaluated by an MRO, MRO stands for Medical Review Officer, um, of which I am one. An MRO is a special certification that uh, gives a physician credentials to evaluate a federally controlled drug screen as to whether it's negative or positive. And so when we have a non-negative come back, we evaluate it in accordance with the medication the patient ta has taken uh, and make a judgment, well, that it's, it's a true positive or it's a negative. Got it. So basically, um, a, a test can come back where there's no question whether it's positive or negative, but a test can also come back saying we need to do more evaluation on it. Uh, certainly, that's, that's correct. And even a test, a test can come back positive. Uh, and the patient may have some kind of medication that he's on that is a legitimately prescribed medication uh, that causes that drug screen, although the test was positive, to be reported as negative. Right. And so the function of a medical, the function of the medical review officer is to sort out all those details. And uh, we have a, a whole team of people at our facility that uh, assist me in being able to make those judgments quickly, so that our clients can get their employment employee uh, either back to work or on the job or in the truck or in the air or on the rail car. Mm, okay. So basically, so that we don't kind of like basically uh, punish, and by punish we probably mean fire, uh, somebody unjust, somebody who uh, is currently taking med medicine because he or she is pregnant or whatever the, the case might be. That's correct. Absolutely correct. Uh, there are lots of reasons to have a positive drug screen that can be interpreted as negative. Um, and so, and, and those details need to be sorted out by a physician. And, uh, 
uh, and we do that as part of our services. Mm-hmm. What about what about people? What about people who are high on life? Do they sometimes test positive? <laughs> I've, I've, not, I've never had anybody that's high on life test positive for a drug screen. Usually, they don't need drugs, <laughs> and so their their highness is related to uh, endorphins that they're creating themselves most of the time. <laughs> that's my point exactly. Uh-